Good evening and welcome back to my Late Night Spook Show here on the Horror Metal Channel. I'm your host, Hellhound, and uh, um, in my Universal Monsters collection video, I promised I was eventually going to do a video showing my Hammer Horror collection, but I was just waiting for a few of them to come in the mail uh, on Blu-ray. Um, so, most of them got here, um, except for two. I'm still waiting on two, and seeing as I'm going out of town later this evening, I'm going to be gone all weekend. I'm going to film this video now, and when those other two arrive, I'll reveal what they are at the end of this video. When those other two arrive, I'll show them at the beginning of my next video, or maybe a future Loathsome Lore episode or something. Uh, but anyway, it's okay. Um, I'll still tell you what they are in a little bit. But um, yeah, let's go and look at all my Hammer Horror, um, various um, physical media um, formats, and uh, <laughs> from VHS to Blu-ray. So uh, let's go and start with uh, VHS. Um, unlike my Universal Monsters collection, I don't have very many Hammer movies on VHS. The only two I have are... Dracula's Risen from the Grave, and Curse of the Werewolf. Um, I used to have a lot more, of course, but, you know, you know how that goes. Um, <laughs> I don't have them anymore. These are, like, two remaining ones from my original Hammer VHS collection. Um, yeah. So, I'll talk about these movies a little more when I, um, as I go along. Uh, but for now, yeah, these are the only two I have on VHS. And, uh, yeah, this one's seen better days. It's been through hell, yeah. <laughs> Curse of the Werewolf. Um, God, it covers the box is all torn up. Um... Yeah, I'm always afraid to put this in my VCR, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, so, yeah, those are the only ones I have on VHS. Um, alright, so next is, uh, DVD. Um, let's start with the Frankenstein franchise, you know, as I really in my Universal Monsters collection video, um, those Universal, uh, original black and white classics from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and maybe even the silent age, the, the ones from the 20s, um, Definitely started my uh, early journey as a horror fan. Um, they were among the first horror movies I saw, and after I watched all those, I eventually got into the Hammer horror um, film, starting with Curse of Frankenstein. That was the first one I ever saw, and uh, yeah, this is this was pretty much the first uh, true full length um, Hammer horror film um, that kind of started um, kind of remaking like the old Universal classics. And, uh, you know, they'd experimented a little bit with the fourth equator ma mass and stuff. And they'd, they'd done, like, science fiction and stuff like that before. But this is kind of the first full-length horror. Um, and, yeah, when I first saw this, I was like, wow, this is way different from the Universal version. It's in color. Um, it's a lot more violent and bloody. Um, it's, you know, more sexual. You know, it was definitely felt more adult-oriented um, than the Universal Monsters films, which are a little more innocent in comparison to these for the most part. Um, yeah, bright colors, just, you know, very vivid... Um, uh, sets and stuff. Um, yeah, I love this movie. I'm gonna save my full thoughts for most of these movies and I review them individually, or maybe I'll do a top ten list or something, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on them, but yeah, basically Peter Cushing, of course, plays Dr. Victor Frankenstein, the Baron, um, and he creates a monster. He assembles from dead body parts, and the creature in this movie is played by Christopher Lee. Um, the first of many, many, uh, Hammer Horror films that feature both actors in lead roles. Um, yeah, great movie, great adaption of the book. It's a little closer to the original Mary Shelley novel than uh, the, um, the 1931 Universal classic Frankenstein is, but it does take quite a few liberty, liberties and does stray from the source material quite a bit. But it's a, very, it's a great movie. This is by far my favorite in Hammer's Frankenstein series. It's the first and still the best. Highly recommend it. Um, great movie, and I'll save, I'll, uh, save my full thoughts when I uh, either review it in, in a separate video or do like part of the top ten list, which it'll obviously be on there. Uh, now, the next film in the Frankenstein franchise from Hammer is Revenge of Frankenstein. Uh, Peter Cushing returns as the Baron, having kind of faked his death at the be at the, after the ending of the, f the, f the last film and the beginning of this one. Um, he returns, and he... There's not really m as much of a monster this time. He does uh, put the brain of his uh, hunchbacked, um, deformed assistant into a new body, which is, like I, I guess, physically, you know, uh, superior or whatever. Um, free from his deformities and disabilities, I guess. Um, but, you know, the, the the monster in this film, Carl, his assistant, does talk and acts... It looks and acts more normal than the creature from the last film played by Christopher Lee. Um, but it's a very, very good movie. Very fo a good follow-up. It's probably my second favorite in the Frankenstein series. It's a close-up between this and a couple others, which we'll get to in a minute. But it's a very decent follow-up. I have a few issues with it. Some things at the beginning and the end don't make a lot of sense. But uh, I'll go into more detail on, in a future uh, video talking about the Hammer movies. 
Um, all right, so next we have Evil of Frankenstein. That's the third film in the franchise, but uh, I don't have that in a separate um, uh, release on a DVD. I do have it as part of a um, collection while I get to it. I do have it on Blu-ray, but I'll save that for when I get to those. Um, so the fourth film was Cran Frankenstein Created Woman, and I think this is the most underrated film in the Hammer Frankenstein series. Um, there's not really much of a monster to speak of in this one either. Um, there was an Evil of Frankenstein, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um... Yeah, this time, um, his assistant, um, Peter Cushing returns as Baron Frankenstein, of course. Evil of Frankenstein, by the way, didn't share much continuity with the first two, and this one doesn't really either. Um, after the first two, the continuity's kind of all over the place. But anyway, yeah, he returns. Um, he has another assistant, also named Hans, just like the, uh, one of the ones in, um, Revenge of Frankenstein and Evil of Frankenstein. He's a, you know, what is it with the name Hans? It's just as common as Paul and Carl in the Hammer films. But anyway, yeah, he, um, Hans gets executed, um, for a crime he didn't commit, and then his girlfriend commits suicide. And for this movie's pretty bizarre and out there in that uh, Victor Frankenstein experiences with souls instead of brains this time. And he transfers Hans' soul into his girlfriend, Christina. He, he resurrects Christina and puts Hans' soul in her body, which is a little out there, even for the Frankenstein um, franchise. But the best part of this film is when Christina, uh, or Christina slash Hans, uh, he slash her, uh, gets revenge on um, the three men that were responsible for the crime, killing her father, which Hans was blamed for and punished and executed for. Um, yeah, those are the best parts, those revenge parts. I was rooting for the whole way. I love that eerie music that plays when she's luring these unsuspecting men to her death. You know, she kind of seduces them, she lures them into her trap, and then she kills them, which is awesome. You know, we hear Hans' voice uh, coming from her saying, kill him, kill him, Christina. I love that. You know, it might have been the inspiration for the first Friday 13th when... Mrs. Voorhees says, you know, kill her mommy, and, and Jason's voice, you know, uh, who knows. Um, but yeah, a very underrated entry, I like it a lot. It might be, it's definitely my fourth favorite, but I might even enjoy it a little bit more than some of the other sequels. Um, yeah, um, Susan Denberg's great as, uh, Christina. She was, um, she did, wasn't in a whole lot of movies, um, I guess she was, uh, a Playboy, um, I guess she posed for Playboy quite a few times. Um, and by the way, yeah, she never wears this outfit um, in the movie. It's, it's on a lot of the releases. It's on a lot of the um, publicity stills and, and um, promotional material. But she never actually wears it in the movie for some reason. But who knows? I guess she just did it. They, that was just part of the advertising or whatever. But yeah, I do really like this movie. Uh, but any, again, I'll, I'll go into more detail when I review it separately. Or do a top ten, like I said. Um, now the next one is... Um, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed, the fifth film. Um, this is probably my third favorite out of the first two. Um, now, the thing about the F Hammer Frankenstein series is, you know, the Universal film focused more on the monster. There's the monster was the sole recurring character in all those movies. These focus more on the Doctor himself, you know, Victor Frankenstein himself, um, played by Peter Cushing, like I said. And he kind of is the villain. He's the protagonist and the main character, the main focus, but he's kind of the main villain, too. And he himself kind of becomes the monster, um throughout the series. He's, he is the monster in this series. He's Frankenstein's monster and Dr. Frankenstein, interesting enough. Especially the ending of Revenge of Frankenstein, when he himself becomes, uh, he has his brain transplanted in another body, made from dead tissue, I guess. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, in this movie, he's by far the most evil. He was very uh, vile in Curse of Frankenstein, but most of it was kind of in the name of science or to cover himself. You know, he killed people um, so he could make his creation and also to um, people who were trying to blackmail him and stuff. In this one, he does evil things just for the sake of it. He has no value for human life. He even rapes a woman at one point, which I really don't care for. I wish that scene was cut from the movie. I heard that the director, and even Peter Cushing himself, and the actress, the great Veronica Carlson, who I really like, none of them wanted to do it. I don't know whose idea it was. It was a bad idea, but I guess it just shows how much how evil he'd become in this one, because he's very much the main villain, and he's just very despicable. I was rooting against him the whole time, whereas most of the other movies I rooted for him. Um, evil of Frankenstein created, and uh, Frankenstein created the woman. He wasn't too evil, by the way. I, oddly enough, yeah, evil of Frankenstein, you'd think he would be evil in that one, but he was kind of likable in those, and actually did kind of care about others, people other than himself. This one, he's just despicable. He does nothing but bad things. The monster this time is his uh, assistant named Brant, who he places in the body of another man, the, uh, the, the, the uh, director of the asylum that Brant was a part of. Brant lost his mind because of Frankenstein's experiments. Um, yeah, and you really sympathize with Brand. He's not really a typical monster either. He's more human. He talks. He looks normal. He's a scar on his head. But that's about it. Um, you know, he goes to see his wife. She rejects him. Um, you really feel sorry for him. You do want to see him get revenge on Frankenstein for uh, making him into a, a monster, I guess. Um, yeah, and I love the climax of this film. That's what really wins me over is the end. It's a very fiery, very explosive, very satisfying ending. I just love it. Um, so yeah, this is probably my first, my third favorite next to the first two. Very good movie. Um, it does take a little bit to get to the good stuff, and as I said, I really dislike that rape scene, but I do think this is definitely one of the best, and one of Peter Cushing's best performances. 
Um, so after that one, they kind of remade Curse of Frankenstein. They did another one called Horror of Frankenstein which Ra with Ralph Bates, which I'll get to in a minute. It doesn't really follow the other movies. The continuity is already a mess anyway, but that one, that one starts all over. It has Ralph Bates playing Dr. Frankenstein. Peter Cushing's not in it. It doesn't follow from the others, and it tells, you know, the same story again, but with some, some differences. But I'll get to that one in a minute. It's kind of a parody in, in some ways. Um, but the real... Um, the final film in the um, Peter Cushing Frankenstein movies is Frankenstein is and the Monster from Hell. This is my least favorite for a few reasons. Um, I do like the setting in the asylum. Um, Peter Cushing returns as Dr. Frankenstein with a really bad wig at this time. Um, yeah, he's in an asylum and he blackmails the, um, the director of the asylum into... Uh, letting him experiment on people. And he is, like, killing people or causing their deaths and building a new body from dead parts. Um... It's taken pretty seriously, but I feel like a lot of the movie's pretty boring. Um, yeah, there are some really cool parts, there's some highlights, but what really uh, ruins this movie for me is the design of the monster. It looks ridiculous. It's supposedly made from human parts. I guess the guy's name is Herr Schneider. He was an animalistic, brutal serial killer who committed suicide. Um, yeah, it's his body with, like, different hands and a different brain from a professor again, who was another uh, inmate at the asylum, I guess. Um, yeah, the monster looks, it looks like some hairy ape creature. Why does it look like a gorilla when it was made from human parts? It looks like, it's ridiculous. Um, I really, and he's played by David Prowse, who also played the monster in, uh, Horror Frankenstein, which I had kind of a silly design too, but it's a lot better than this. Um, this looks even worse than the one in Evil Frankenstein, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, yeah, the, the monster really ruins it for me, because there would be, like, a, a dramatic moment where everything's serious, and Peter Cushing's, you know, saying this awesome lines like he always does his proper adequate and articulate dialogue he sounds really intelligent then he'll show the monster and i'm just like oh my gosh this makes me roll my eyes it's so grown uh, it makes me groan it's so cringeworthy um but yeah the movie could have been better this is probably is my least favorite in the peter cushing france on films but again uh more on that in another video all right so now let's get to the dracula movies um horror dracula was the first one they did and i think this is definitely the best it also has peter cushing and um uh Dr count dracula of course um is uh christopher lee um, yeah, Christopher Lee plays Dracula, and Peter Cushing plays Van Helsing, and Peter Cushing's by far my favorite Van Helsing. I think I like him as Van Helsing just a little more than his Dr. Frankenstein. He's great at that role, too, but I kind of like him playing, like, a straight-up hero, you know, and, and most of the Hammer Frankenstein series, he was, um, more of an anti-hero or, um, or a straight-up villain, like I said. Um, I like him being the heroic one that saves the day. Um, they're both great. Um, I've talked about this quite a bit before, so I won't go into too much detail. It does stray from the novel quite a bit by Bram Stoker, even more than the Universal um, Dracula does, which is weird, because like I pointed out earlier, their version of Frankenstein follows the Mary Shelley story closer, but this one strays further from the source material, which is interesting. Um, yeah, very climactic uh, battle at the end with um, Van Helsing fighting Dracula. Um... Yeah, it had a lot of blood. It was, you know, it was more violent and sexual than the Universal films, and I just love it. You know, Christopher Lee, when he first comes out, and he has those fangs dripping blood and those, those eyes. It's just amazing. Um, but yeah, I'll save my full thoughts on this one for a future video. Um, it was followed by Brides of Dracula, which was the second film in the series. Peter Cushing returned as Van Helsing, but uh, Christopher Lee's not in it. The Dracula character's not in it, despite the title. And it features David Peel as a different vampire, Baron Meinster. But as, as I said... Um, Peter Cushing does return as Van Helsing, and he's great. It's a great movie. It's my second favorite. Um, but the true follow-up to Horror Dracula, the third film in the series, is Prince of Darkness. Um, Christopher Lee has no dialogue in this one. He's completely mute. He's totally silent. I've heard different sources. Um, he claims that he didn't like any of the dialogue. It was too cheesy, so he refused to speak. And I've heard other um, people who worked in this movie say they didn't want to pay him to say lines. I don't. I, who knows? Uh, I guess it's anybody's guess, but it's a great movie aside from that. Yeah, I do prefer The Count to have some dialogue, um, but it is a really, really good movie. I love it. I like it a lot. It's my third favorite. It's got Barbara Shelley in it, so can't go wrong with that. Um, the next film is Dracula's Risen from the Grave. I like this one a lot, too. Um, yeah, he, the last movie he kind of drowned or was trapped under ice, and this movie he emerges. He takes control of a priest, and, um, and he's really badass in it. Um, he's, He's not in the movie a whole lot, uh, kind of like the the last one, uh, but he does have some a lot of lines this time. Um, well, not a lot, but well, more. Uh, he does have an actual <laughs> amount of lines, unlike the last film. Um, but yeah, I really do wish that uh, Peter Cushing had returned for Prince of Darkness and this one, and all of them for that matter. Um, but yeah, it's a really good movie, really good follow-up, it's one of my favorites. Um, Taste of the Blood of Dracula, I really like too, um, Ralph Bates is in this one, and he's not in the movie long, long enough, he plays Lord Courtly, and I think he does a great job, he's like by far my favorite character in the movie, and he, uh, ends up resurrecting Dracula, with these, these three guys who are just bored and fun-loving, all they want to do is, uh, terrorize people and do crazy stuff, 
Um, you know, he kind of convinces them to, to drink the blood of Dracula, which they refuse, and he drinks it and becomes Dracula himself. It's kind of a weird scene. And then Dracula kind of gets revenge on them um, for killing his servant, which is odd. Um, and he uses their children against them. He turns their, their children into vampires or takes control of them and gets revenge on the parents, the three men, which is kind of an interesting uh, scenario. Yeah, I really like this. Christopher Lee's great, as always. Um, a great cast, pretty cool storyline. Um, I dig it quite a bit. Um, next we have Stars, Scars of Dracula, the sixth film in the franchise, and fifth starring Christopher Lee. Um, this is kind of underrated. A lot of people bash this one, but what I like about it is Christopher Lee is kind of the star of this one. He has the most screen time and most dialogue, probably out of the whole series. Um, he's in it a whole lot. There are some really odd scenes. Uh, Patrick Troughton plays his assistant, uh, his henchman, Clove, who's a different character from the Clove from Prince of Darkness, you know, another servant that he had before, at least I think so. Um, but yeah, I don't think this is as bad as Irby says it is, but it is, uh, probably weaker than the previous films, uh, the previous five, um, but I still recommend it. Christopher Lee's great, and as I said, he is in it a whole lot, which is good. Um, next we have Dracula AD 1972. This is kind of where the series really went downhill, it, it takes place in modern times as a contemporary setting, um, you know, it's obviously in the 70s, you know, it's weird to see a Dracula movie take place in modern day. Um, you know, the hippie characters kind of get on my nerves a little bit, but the best part is Peter Cushing returns as Van Helsing. He plays the real Van Helsing, I guess named Lawrence in this version at the beginning, and then he plays his descendant, Lorimer Van Helsing, in the present, uh, scene, so it make, makes up the main body of the movie. His daughter, Jessica Van Helsing, is played by Stephanie Beecham, who's really good. Um, Christopher Lee is in them as a whole lot, um... It's not terrible, but it is one of the weaker ones. It's definitely the, the worst in the series so far than the previous six. Um, but it has its moments. And as, as I said, Peter Cushing's great, and Christopher Lee's great as always. It's a welcome return of Peter Cushing. I wish he could have been in some of the other movies, some of the better ones. But again, I am glad that he did eventually return. Next we have Satanic Rites of Dracula. This is my least favorite of all the ones um, starring Christopher Lee. Um, Peter Cushing returns yet again. Christopher Lee's good. He, this time he wants world domination. He's trying to... Um, a genetically engineer this bacteria that's going to bring about the plague and the end of mankind. Uh, I don't know. It's really weird. You know, he's like a, he's more like Lex Luthor than he is Dracula. He's like this, you know, this corrupt, uh, he's got this like corrupt criminal empire, a bunch of people working for him. Um, yeah, some really odd choices. The way they kill Dracula at the end is kind of odd too, but it has its moments. It's not completely unwatchable, but it is definitely one of the weaker entries and, um, I feel like they can do better. But as I said, Cushing and Lee, are, it's always great to see both of them. Um, they actually have some lines. Uh, they actually have dialogue, a conversation in this one, unlike most of the others. Um, all right, so that's it. Uh, the, the last film in the series was Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, which I don't have on DVD. I'll get to that when I look at my Blu-ray collection. That one didn't have Christopher Lee. Um, they, that one did take place back in, uh, I think it took place in 1904. So it, was, uh, it wasn't in modern times, like the last two. And it's kind of like a martial arts kung fu kind of thing. Um, Peter Cushing returns as the original Van Helsing. Um, Dracula this time is played by John Forbes Robertson briefly. And then he takes over somebody else's body. Somebody else dubs over his voice. Um, so yeah, they didn't have Christopher Lee. I don't even know why they needed the Dracula character. It could have just been Van Helsing fighting other vampires. You know, martial arts <laughs> kung fu vampires, I guess. Uh, the seven golden vampires you know, in their undead army. The skeletons that rise from the ground and stuff. Really weird movie, but I loved martial arts when I was a kid. I loved martial arts movies, so I kind of enjoyed it. It's entertaining, but it's a little too different from the rest of the series to even be considered part of the you know actual Dracula franchise. But um, Peter Cushing's great, and it has its moments. So that's my brief review of that one. Okay, so next we have The Mummy. Um, now, the 1959 Hammer version of The Mummy is more a remake of the classic Universal The Mummy's Hand and not the 1932 original with Boris Karloff as Imhotep. This time, we have Karis, who is played by Tom Tyler in The Mummy, Mummy's Hand and Lon Chaney Jr. in the next three Universal Mummy films. Uh, this time, Karis is played by Christopher Lee. He has a, the, pretty much the same backstory as Karis in the Universal films. And it has elements of both The Mummy's Hand, um, The Mummy's Tomb, and even kind of the ending of The Mummy's Ghost. There's not too much versus The Mummy's Curse, but there is a couple things that connect it to the original 1932 film, even though that one didn't have Karis, um, and that's the character of Joseph Wimple, who's now the uncle of John Banning from The Mummy's Tomb, the original, um, and I guess, um, you know, and because um, Steve Banning was a character in The Mummy's Hand, who was killed off in The Mummy's Tomb early on, um, and uh, also the uh, the scroll of life, the scroll, the sacred scroll brings the mummies to life instead of the Tana leaves, like in the... Um, Universal Karis movies. Uh, great movie. Yeah, Peter Cushing plays the main character, um, John Banning, and uh, Christopher Lee plays the mummy, Karis. It's pretty brutal, um, you know, way more brutal and violent than the um, 
It's been Universal Karis films, and I like it a lot. It's probably my, my, my favorite mummy film next to the 1932 Universal original, Boris Karloff as Imhotep. Um, this is probably my favorite film featuring the mummy Karis. Uh, that character. Christopher Lee does a great job. Peter Cushing is great. I highly recommend this one. It was followed by uh, Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, which I don't have as an individual release. I'll get to that in a minute. The third one is The Mummy's Shroud. This time The Mummy it has no connection to the, the other two, the first two films. Uh, none of them are related to each other. They're all, they're all standalones. Um, this time The Mummy is uh, Ra and Tef, played by Dickie Owen, I believe. Um, he has kind of a similar origin as, um, as Karis from the first film. And, uh, or no, no, this is Prim. I'm sorry, Ron Tiff was the mummy in Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. This one, uh, the mummy's name is Prim. I think he's also played by Dickie Owen. Um, or, or maybe Dickie Owen played the he, before he became a mummy. I, I don't remember. Uh, it's not really important. But anyway, um, yeah, not a terrible movie, but not nearly as good as uh, this one. None of them were. This is the best one. The next three sequels weren't anything too great, but they're pretty entertaining. They're pretty fun. You know, I like the whole... Thing, the whole idea of a bandaged uh, mummy walking around killing people. You know, it's just, it's simple, but it's its fun. It, it works. The fourth film is Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. There's no bandaged, uh, lumbering, limping mummy to speak of. This time it's a reincarnation of a, um, a Queen Terra, um, played excellently by Valerie Leon. Um, yeah, great cast, great storyline. This might be my second favorite next to the original, the, the first one, the 1959 one with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's not too bad. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, but, you know, nothing too great or groundbreaking, um, but it's a lot of fun. The cool thing about this DVD is it has, uh, the Hammer trailer collection as a separate disc, so that's pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, overall I recommend this one. Um, okay, so then we have some box sets. This is the, uh, Hammer Horror Series, the franchise collection. It contains Brides of Dracula, Curse of the Werewolf, uh, Phantom of the Opera, Paranoia, Kiss of the Vampire, Nightmare, Night Creatures, and Evil of Frankenstein. Um, yeah, so... You know, of course, I had to have this because some of those didn't get a proper individual release. This is the only way to own them on a physical format at the time, or on DVD anyway. Um, so yeah, eight films. Um, most of them are must sees. Brides of Dracula, of course, is excellent. So is Curse of the Werewolf. Um, Curse of the Werewolf with Oliver, Oliver Reed playing Leon Corlito. I've always kind of considered Hammer's answer to the Wolfman, even though Leon Corlito is very different from Lawrence Talbot. He has a different origin. He is a werewolf. He has come transformed to a full moon and is. Uh, Killed by a silver bullet at the end, but other than that, it really shares no similarity with the Wolfman or most other werewolf movies for that matter. It's kind of a weird backstory, but I like it a lot. Oliver Reed's always great, and I think that was his first starring role in a full-length feature film. So this is a must-have. Um, yeah, all these movies are pretty great. Um, I like their version of Fan of the Opera a lot, too. Um, yeah, and Evil Frankenstein is one of the weaker ones. Um, the thing is, it doesn't follow continuity to the first two Hammer Frankenstein films, and the monster himself looks a little more like the Universal version. I guess they got permission to use the original Boris Karloff design created by Jack Pierce in the Universal version, um, but it doesn't look too great. It looks kind of crumbly. It looks like he's covered in chalk powder, but at least it is an actual monster, unlike most of the ones in the Universal, I mean, the uh, Hammer Frankenstein movies, but eh, it's not terrible, but it's definitely one of the weaker ones. Then we have this uh, Icons of Horror collection, Hammer Films, for creepy classics. It has Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, the second in the Mummy series, with Ryan Teeth as the mummy this time. He's missing a hand, and um, he wants revenge or something. Uh, <laughs> it's not as good as the first one. There's also Scream of Fear, uh, Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, which is pretty good, and The Gorgon, which is pretty good, even though the makeup effects and the, um, the costume for the Gorgon is a little cheesy and dated by today's standards. It was still pretty fun. So, yeah, I'm very happy to have this one. It's the only release, the fully physically release I have of Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, the second of the Mummy series, so, um, I had to have that, um, yeah. Now it's on the Blu-rays, uh, Evil of Frankenstein, the third film of the Hammer Frankenstein series I already talked about, it's one of the weaker ones, but Peter Cushing's great, as always, and, uh, it is cool that the monster, they did try to make him look more like the Universal, um, Frankenstein, and, uh, it is very similar to Universal Frankenstein, it's, it's, it takes a, a lot of it's in a, a laboratory in a castle, and the explosive ending is something straight out of the Universal film, so this is the most similar to, uh, you know, the original classics out of the series, but it is kind of one of the weaker ones, I kind of would have rather Hammer been a little more progressive and kind of did their own thing, but I can definitely respect them for their attempt, it's not, as I said, it's not god-awful, it definitely has its moments, I do like the ending. Um, then there's a fourth film Archer already talked about, Frankenstein Created Woman. Um, all these Blu-rays are by Scream Factory, by the way, except for one, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, yeah, the fourth film, very good. I love the revenge aspect. Uh, yeah, there's that outfit again that she never wears. Um, yeah, Scream Factory always does a good job. It's a little bit of special features. Um, yeah, I already talked about this one, but, um, yeah, it's the most underrated entry in the series, and, uh, 
kind of the when I have a marathon of these, this is kind of one of the ones I look forward to watching the most. There's Horror of Frankenstein, which, I, as I said, doesn't fit in the continuity. It does have Ver Veronica Carlson, who is also in Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. And Ralph Bates is pretty good. He's very different from Cush Cushing. If you thought Cushing was evil and ruthless, Bal Ralph Bates is straight up sinister. He's a total sociopath. He kills people. He does horrible things. He's a womanizer. And he doesn't even flinch. He doesn't feel any remorse or empathy for what he does. He's just a total despicable evil villain. And the, the monster is played by David Prowse, who also played the monster in Monster from Hell, which looked ridiculous. And he played Darth Vader, of course. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. Rest in peace. Um, yeah, this is my least favorite in the Hammer Frankenstein series, but it does have its moments. It's a retelling of Curse of Frankenstein, just not as good. Um, kind of feels more like a parody, but I kind of do like the way the monster is done. He wasn't like sympathetic and tragic like in some of the other movies. He was just kind of a, you know, unstoppable, insanely strong juggernaut that you know can't be stopped by conventional means. And uh, Ralph Bates was pretty good too, even though he's no Peter Cushing. Uh, I always thought Ralph Bates was un underrated. Um, then we have Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Yeah, I already talked about this. Ridiculous looking monster, but other than that, it's okay, you know. But probably my least favorite of the Peter Cushing Frankensteins. Brides of Dracula, like I already talked about. Love this. Peter Cushing returns as Van Helsing. David Peel as Baron Monster. There is no Christopher Lee, there is no Dracula, but it's really, really great. Highly entertaining. Um, yeah, this is a Scream Factory collector's, collector's edition, and I love that artwork. Brides of Dracula. My second, the second Dracula... Hammer film, and uh, my second favorite. And here's uh, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, the third Hammer Dracula film, and the second to star Christopher Lee's Dracula. There's no Peter Cushing, but, and he doesn't have any, uh, Christopher Lee doesn't have any lines, but it's very, very, very good. Um, yeah. Scream Factory always does a good job, and this one's no exception. Prince of Darkness. Gotta love it. Scars of Dracula, the sixth film, where Dracula is in it a lot, but it uh, could have been a lot better. Um, yeah, I've talked about that a lot. I do think it's underrated, but it's not great. Um, Legends of the Seven Golden Vampires, the, the ninth and final film in the Dracula series. Peter Cushing's great. The martial arts scenes are kind of amusing, but other than that, there's not a whole lot to like here. I don't. John Forbes Robinson wasn't a terrible Dracula, but he's barely in it, and he's definitely no Christopher Lee. And uh, I didn't know that Dracula had the ability to take over someone else's body. He never did that in any other films, so... Uh, also, the continuity doesn't make any sense, but I'll save that for a future video, because I'll be here all day if I... Um, mention the continuity. Basically, yeah, it's <laughs> they're not, it doesn't it's not in the right order. Um, then Curse of the Werewolf, like I already talked about, one of my favorite Oliver Reed movies, and uh, this is the only werewolf movie that Hammer ever made. I wish they could have done more. And like I said, I consider it their answer to Universal's The Wolfman with Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, the Lo Leon Carlito is a much much different character than Lawrence Talbot, um, but uh, good stuff. It's one of my favorites. It's kind of overlooked, and you know. When it comes to the Hammer Horror films, great. Uh, I love the Scream Factory Collector's Edition. Awesome artwork. Awesome movie. Highly recommended. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. This also has Ralph Bates as well as um, Martine Beswick. Um, this is probably my favorite uh, Hammer uh, version of Dr. Jekyll. The whole Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde story. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny, too. Um, it's kind of interesting seeing it turn into a woman. Um, this isn't fresh in my memory. It's been a few years since I've seen it. I've seen it. I just got this on Blu-ray recently. I don't remember a whole lot about it. But as I said, I do like Ralph Bates. I think he's an underrated actor. I think he might be my favorite male lead next to Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. And I wish I could, he could have been in more films and better films. Um, okay, and then we have the Karnstein trilogy. Vampire Lovers with Ingrid Pitt, which I love. Peter Cushing's also in this. Uh, great cast, great movie. Um, it was very groundbreaking for its time. Um, yeah, Vampire Lovers, it's, it's excellent, I can't recommend this enough, this, this is probably my second favorite vampire movie done by Hammer, next to, of course, the Dracula series, um, now the sequel, not so much, Lust for a Vampire, the second in the Carnstrain trilogy, uh, to put it nicely as possible, this isn't anywhere near as good as the Vampire Lovers, um, yeah, this is, I, I like cheesy, over-the-top movies, this one's a little too silly, uh, Ralph Bates is in it, and like I said, he is underrated, and I like him, but, uh, most of this movie doesn't work for me. I wish Ingrid Pitt had returned. Uh, I wish Peter Cushing had returned somehow, you know. Um, yeah, uh, maybe I should give it another chance. It's been a while since I've seen it, but, uh, something tells me I'm still gonna be pretty disappointed. This is, let's just say it's my least favorite out of the three. Um, Twins of Evil, I think, is the second best next to Vampire Love. This is the third and final film in the tr Karnstein trilogy. And, uh, it doesn't share a lot of continuity. None of these three really do. There's a few, um, like errors in the continuity, but it's okay. This is the only Hammer Blu-ray that's not by uh, Scream Factory. It's done by Synops Films, who along with Aero Video, Blue Underground, and of course Scream Factory themselves, they always do a great job as well. So yeah, it's loaded with some, it's got some cool features. Um, 
And uh, I've always liked this movie a lot. Um, yeah, great cast. Peter Cushing returns. It's pretty much a different character um, than the one in Vampire Lovers. Uh, it's kind of a long story, so, but uh, I'll save it for another day. But yeah, anyway, this is a must-have. This comes with the, this version comes with the DVD and Blu-ray. And uh, yeah, third and final film in the Card Scene Trilogy. Um, I like it a lot. It's been a while since I've seen it. I need to watch this again. I just got this in the mail today, actually. So, um, and then there's Plague of the Zombies. This came out in 1966. It was a double feature with Dracula, Prince of Darkness at the time. And um, it's came out two years before George R. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. So, you know, a lot of people think that's the kind of the first zombie movie of that type. Um, but this one kind of did it first. Um, maybe not necessarily better, but it's a really good zombie movie. It's one of my favorites. And, uh, yeah, Scream Factory did a good job. And uh, it's definitely worth having. Yeah, Plague of the Zombies. Check it out. And uh, that's pretty much it for my horror, Hammer Horror Collection. The only two that I'm waiting for are uh, Countess Dracula, um, also with Ingrid Pitt, and uh, Captain Chrono's Vampire Hunter. I was going to wait till those two came in the mail, um, but I figured I'd go ahead and make this video now. I'll show those two when they when they do eventually get here and whatever my next video is. But uh, all right, guys. Well, that's it for uh, all my Hammer Horror. Let me know which um, films you own in the description below. Let me know what your favorites are or least favorites or whatever. Let's talk about some Hammer Horror. All right, guys, I'm Hell Thank you for watching my late-night spook show here on the Horror Metal channel. Until next time, later.